Hi everyone, my name is Magnus. I'm about to show you how we can use LiveDB together with XSockets, the XSockets web socket server, uh, which you are able to pull down from the NuGet gallery or from our website. Uh, first of all, we have a solution called XSockets Demo App 3 uh, that uh, includes a couple of projects a live DB project, a Venus socket server, and a handler project, as well as the MVC MVC3 app uh, that hosts our web website. Uh, first of all, we have the Venus X socket server, which you will get from the NuGet package uh, when you download it. Uh, we can have a look at the, the, um, the configuration file. Our server, in this case, our web socket server, will run at the this port, 4502, and will accept traffic from those two uh, host names, and it, and it will be located at localhost in our case, and it will grab the plugins or handlers from this directory. It's not much to look at, uh, so ne the next step is to, to start the server. Uh, Uh, we can see that uh, the server is running as a console application and it registers a couple of protocols and different kinds of implementations of the WebSockets API. Uh, the last one we has implemented is uh, the HB07 draft. Uh, in this case, it also registers a couple of plugins and we will have a look at the XSocket example questioning handler, this handler's takes advantage of the LiDB in-memory database. Uh, so I will collapse this window and also close this one and have a look at the client. Uh, we have a little client uh, that is uh, that uses jQuery and the JX socket JavaScript API. And we can see here that we are pointing out a specific handler at our server. If you remember, we were running at localhost at port 4502, and I was pointing out a specific handler. We can also see that I prefer to use native web sockets, uh, no fallback mechanisms available in this demo. Um, uh, when our socket is open, uh, it will trigger a event called open. Uh, it's the on on mass, on uh, on open uh, event on the web sockets API, and uh, we can have a look at the WebSocket handler, uh, this one um, I'm pointing out, which is uh, a simple class uh, describing a couple of events. We have an event, first of all, that we should look at is list questioning, uh, which will uh, create a new WebSocket message. And the type of message or XSocket event is a list of LiveDB entities questioning, which is our uh, entity uh, defined for LiveDB. Uh, it's quite a simple class. It's serializable, has a couple of data members, as you see. Uh, for example, it has an ID, title, description, uh, list of votes, and then the total uh, number of votes. Uh, we also have a a model in this case a model for the the live DB stuff, which will inherit the live core model. It's a, a list of um, a dictionary of questioning uh, questioning entities. Uh, it's pretty much the thing. Uh, we also have a couple of commands, and we also have a couple of queries uh, uh, designed for for the for the entity. And a live DB instance, which is a single class uh, that will be invoked by our WebSocket handler. Uh, so I'll go back to the WebSocket handler. Uh, let's pull on this Windows so we can find it a little more easier. Uh, we have a WebSocket handler, as I told you, and we have the, the list list uh, handler event, uh, which is an alias for the list uh, list method. Um, and as I told you, we are creating a list of questioning entities. Uh, we are giving the event the name on list questioning, and we are just uh, sending back uh, all the 
the data we can find on the the the, the model uh, by using the all uh, all method. Uh, we have to deserialize uh, serialize the, the the message as JSON using the serialize method. Uh, in this case, uh, we will go back to the to the client. As you can see, uh, when our client is open, we are listening to a couple of events. In this case, we were listening for uh, on list on list uh, questioning. This was our uh, was our event, uh, and we'll be receiving data called queue. And for each queue, we'll have an item. Those items are the questioning entities, and we will pull uh, create a HTML element, a list element, and set a text to the title and add uh, the number of uh, quotes total, and give a attribute to the, to the element and append it to the to the list. Uh, the list is a UL element below in the HTML code. Uh, uh, this is the event listener. Uh, as you can see, we have, haven't done any triggers yet, uh, so we can can scroll down uh, and towards this method, uh, ask the server for, the, for data on load. Uh, we create a new message called WebSocket uh, uh, list questioning. We add a empty payload and we trigger the message payload to the WebSocket. In this case, the message will be routed to our handler event and we'll pull, uh, send back uh, a new message, which will be handled by uh, this event handler as described earlier. Uh, when running this application, uh, we can let me see if we can start a new instance of the page. As you can see, we have a list of uh, questionings. Go uh, to the left and create a new one. New one. This is a test. And we can see it's adds it to the list. Uh, in this case, when I hit the create button in our client, a method uh, will be invoked. Uh, as you see, I have a new on click. I construct a new WebSocket message called create uh, questioning. Uh, I also assemble a JSON object giving the title and the description based on the uh, HTML elements below. And I will pass the, the JSON to the message and trigger the payload. In this case, the message will be routed to the method called create questioning. Uh, in this case, it digitalizes the, the JSON payload as a live DB entity's questioning, and it will be adding uh, the entity to the live DB model uh, by using uh, the execute command. First of all, we assemble the command. Uh, after it's done, I'll create a new WebSocket event or WebSocket message, uh, which is the type of entities questioning. Uh, I'm giving, giving the event a new name on new questioning. I'm about to tell all clients that are listening to the socket that something has happened. I will pass the data. The data is the newly created uh, instance of uh, a questioning entity in our model. I will deserialize the message event as JSON and I will pass the data back to everyone listening to the socket that still are connected. Uh, in this case, we will have a look at this event handler in the client, uh, which will look uh, like this. We have a event handler called on new questioning. Uh, that will grab a, a callback called Q. Uh, uh, it works exactly as the, the, the other one described earlier. It adds a new element to the list, uh, giving the total number of votes, etc. Uh, in this case, uh, we can also see if we pull up another, another window, uh, and we can say that this is not the user. Uh, that wants to create a new uh, question called new one two. Uh, there's no description. I say create. We can see 
that the message is broadcasted to both of these clients. And we, if you pull up a new window, the third client creating a new uh, new one three. And there's no description here at all. Uh, you can see that the new question is broadcasted to each client listening to the to the WebSocket. Uh, we can also have a look at the next feature now. Uh, if I place a vote, clicks one of those buttons, we can see that it broadcasts the vote to the client uh, as well as we can give uh, this one uh, at the top uh, five votes. I copy the URL and I pull down the windows, comes back later, another day, have the same number of votes, the data is persistent in the LiveDB database, as well as we can, can pull down the WebSocket server uh, this way. Uh, I can go back to the WebSocket and we'll be receiving nothing in this case. Oh, sorry, we have a socket server running. Closing this down, we'll have nothing uh, coming back. If I start a new instance of the server, we will see how LiveDB uh, brings back the data from the, the disk into memory, uh, and I can reload. Uh, sorry, reload the stuff. Uh, we'll have the, uh, the data back, uh, as well as we can can place some new votes upon the, the data. Uh, this is quite cool, I think. Uh, can also have a look at the event handler for the voting stuff. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm using jQuery Live. Uh, for each uh, LE element that is uh, created in the DOM, I apply a event handler for the click event. Uh, yes, grabbing the, the, the attribute called quid from the, the element that is clicked in this case the LE, and I will also construct a new WebSocket message called vote. I will pass the ID into the, to the message and trigger the payload. In this case, we will have a question uh, event handler called vote, which is an alias for the place vote. I will deserialize the simple ID as a questioning. This gives me a uh, questioning object. In this case, we can have a look. Sorry, we will have a we will have a class representation of the payload uh, ID, which I am also passing in to the add votes method. Uh, let me start the web server again. Uh, so, so again. Uh, in this case, we'll adding the votes to the to the to the entity, the question entity, and we'll send back a message to the the client and gave it the name on vote update. Uh, and you can see I'm passing the back the, the commands result. I will pass the data as JSON. In this case, I want to tell everyone that is connected to the server that something has happened on this specific uh, question and it has got a new vote. It's quite simple. Uh, that is pretty much the thing. Um, let me see here. Uh, I think we can call it off here. And um, I hope that this demo was uh, interesting. And I hope to see uh, some feedback from you uh, on our website, xsockets.net. Thank you very much. Goodbye.